Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to Open Dev virtual event number two. I am uh, Jonathan Bryce, and I'm here once again with Ashley Ferguson, my uh, co host for the day. How are you doing, Ashley? Hello, I'm doing great, Jonathan. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. It's uh, great to see everybody who's joining in. I, uh, I saw James Pinnock pop on screen there for a minute, and I see Julia Krieger very early for both of them. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the, uh, the, the crack of dawn from uh, the Pacific time zone. Um, so this is our second event in the Open Dev uh, virtual event series. Um, Ashley, why don't you talk a little bit about what this event is, is about and also um, what we have coming up the rest of the year. Yeah, um, so this event is going to be about Hardware automation. Um, this is our second uh, open dev event. The last event was large scale, um, large scale usage of open infrastructure software. So we had a lot of great use cases at that event. Um, so we're excited to keep that going. And then we also have um, a third open dev event coming up later in August, and that's going to be um, around containers in production. Um, and Jonathan, you want to tell them a little bit about our uh, our next Open Stack Foundation event later this year. Yes, so uh, we will be having our next Open Infrastructure Summit in October, and uh, that will be a virtual event. It'll run October 19th to the 23rd, and uh, the CFP is open now, so you can go to cfp.openstack.org if you have an idea for a presentation or a panel or um, something that you would like to, uh, to speak about during that event. And it's great to see the, uh, the ideas that are coming in, but uh, we always we always want to get as many as possible, so uh, go to cfp.openstack.org before August 4th and uh, submit your proposal through that. And hopefully we will see all of you um, at the next Open Dev and then also at the Open Infrastructure Summit in October. So for today, um, let's talk a little bit about how to participate in this event that we're kicking off. Yeah, so if you were uh, at the first event, you're probably familiar with it by now, but uh, welcome if this is your first virtual open dev. So I just wanted to talk through a couple tips of just how to, you know, help this event run as smoothly as possible and help you get the most out of it. So first of all, we're obviously using Zoom, so congrats if you made it here. Um, and then we'll also be using um, an open source tool that we call um, an Etherpad. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So back to Zoom. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it, but we will be using the Zoom chat um, for a lot of our discussions. So if you have any technical questions, uh, feel free to post those in there. We will be monitoring that um, and we'll be passing questions to the moderators um, so that they kind of have a better idea of how to direct the conversation and make sure that we get to as many questions as we can. But we also want you to jump into the conversation yourself. So, uh, you know, this is a collaborative event um, that's based on solving open infrastructure challenges. So we want to hear from all of you um, and your experience. So feel free to unmute yourself um, when the time is right and jump into the conversation because we wanna hear from you. Uh, but if you're not speaking, make sure to keep that on mute just so that we uh, eliminate any background noise because we know virtual events can be a little tricky. And so for Etherpad, so like I said, this is an open source tool that we'll be relying on for most of the event. Um, it's basically just like a big collaborative document uh, online. So we use it for notes, uh, feedback and different action items. So. We'll be dropping links to those in uh, in the chat right now, so make sure to check those out. You can also find them um, linked on the online schedule, and we'll drop that link in as well. Uh, so make sure to go check those out. There will be one per day for this event, um, so make sure to jump in there. And that's also a great place to drop your name and contact information if you're interested in, con um, in uh, reaching out to people uh, and staying connected after the event. And if you need any help at all during the event, uh, feel free to email events at openstack.org if you need you know, some tech help, if you have trouble logging in at any point, um, and we'll have people ready to help you out there. Um, and like I said, if you have any technical questions, we'll be using the Zoom chat for that. So if it's relevant to the topic discussion, feel free to drop it in Zoom. And then we also sent out a tips and tricks etherpad uh, in some pre-event emails that we will also drop in the chat right now that, we'll have, uh, that should answer any other questions that you might have. And just as a friendly reminder, uh, this is an OpenStack Foundation event, so we do abide by the OpenStack community code of conduct. So uh, just as a reminder, please be courteous, uh, conduct yourself professionally, and let's respect each other. And if you need to report um, any violations of that code of conduct, you can visit openstack.org slash code of conduct that's right at the bottom there, and that will have um, instructions on how to do that. 
and I'll turn it back over to Jonathan. Thanks, Ashley. And I also want to uh, send out a couple of additional thanks first to our programming committee, Mark, Keith, James, Julia, and Mohammed. Uh, they are the, the crew that put together the, uh, the topics and the schedule, helped to rec uh, recruit different uh, speakers and experts um, to talk about automating hardware and all of the things in the data center this week. So thank you to them for, uh, for their effort. Uh, it's always awesome to have people in our community who, who step up and, uh, and, and help to put these events together. And then I also want to uh, send a thanks to the platinum and gold members of the OpenStack Foundation. These uh, open dev events are underwritten uh, with the support from our platinum and gold members. So thank you to these companies who provide uh, the, the funding and the sponsorship that lets us um, throw these events and bring the community together. So that's, uh, that's it for, uh, for the preamble and uh, to get us started with the day and help to set the stage and um, give us some food for thought. I want to introduce the COO of the OpenStack Foundation, Mark Collier. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm happy to be here. Good afternoon, good morning, good night. Uh, we've got people from all over the world. So just excited to be able to kick off another Open Dev. Um, and I wanted to just start by talking a little bit about why we selected hardware automation. You know, we, these events are a great way to bring developers and operators together and talk about what's working and what else we need to build together. And uh, so we only did three that we had to select this year. And as, as Ashley said, we had the large scale open source uh, infrastructure uh, recently that open dev, and then we're doing containers in production next. So hardware automation uh, made the cut because it's a really, really important topic right now. There's so much um, demand for this type of information and technology software to, to solve this problem. And just to give you a few interesting uh, data points, hopefully about, about why we think it's uh, the time to, to talk about this in a, in a three day event. So first of all, there's just continued growth in infrastructure overall. You can see that in looking at the data center numbers. So the data center market continues to grow rapidly. And as those data centers are built out and they continue to grow and, and new regions are added, those are being filled obviously with compute storage and networking. So that alone just indicates that there's a lot more infrastructure that needs to be managed. And if you can manage it through automation, through software, that's definitely uh, preferable. Um, you know, we also see more complexity. So there's, there's an exciting side to this, right? We see things like ARM, where you're getting 30 to 40% improvement in performance per dollar. You have uh, GPUs, which have been on the rise for several years for AI machine learning for performance. And FPGAs, you see, you know, being used for inference work and things like that. So it's exciting to see new technologies coming in. They're coming into the data center, some that previously were, were on the desktop or mobile. But it's also more work. And so, you know, all that hardware that's coming into those data centers, people have to manage those. Human beings are, are on the other end of the line trying to keep all that gear managed, updated, flashing the, the firmware, trying to manage the images. So it puts a real burden on the people that actually have to manage all that infrastructure. So it's exciting on the one hand, but it also creates more, uh, more work for, for a lot of the people that, that have to manage all that, that hardware. And um, the, the other thing that's starting to happen is that the places and the, the types of environments where this infrastructure, all this compute storage and networking are going that need to be lifecycle managed and, and updated with different stacks uh, of open source you know, it's moving to the edge. So we're not just seeing more data centers, but more types of environments. So that again, puts a strain on the people. Um, and that means that we need to have more tools that we can, uh, that we can rely on and, and not just the tools, but the know-how, the knowledge, you know, sharing those best practices. This is a big part of why we do open dev. And I think we're going to see a lot of that this week at the event. Um, Another factor that's really interesting to note is that there's been a shift in a lot of workloads back to on-premises from, from public cloud. It doesn't mean public cloud is shrinking. Obviously, that's just going to grow and grow and grow. But everything is growing, really, at this point. And so you see uh, about a doubling in the number of people uh, who are building uh, on-premises private clouds and moving workloads onto those. Sometimes you know they've moved them to public cloud and moving them back. So again, this just puts more stress and strain on the people that need to manage all of this infrastructure. So 
if you're running these exciting higher level services like server service mesh or serverless or, or containerized apps, it's obviously running on, on physical hardware at some, some level. And uh, so the people that, that are having to manage that, you know, they're, they're uh, people we can help uh, by bringing everybody together. So really these drivers all add up to more scale, more complexity and more headaches. Um, and at the same time, when I talk to operators out there, um, I don't get the sense that there are more people. Uh, if you see a doubling of the number of uh, environments or the size of environments for on-premises private cloud, for example, I don't think we're seeing a doubling of the teams that need to manage all that hardware. If anything, it's going, going the other way. So uh, all this points again to the software solutions that are being built to help automate all this work. And there's good news there in that uh, we see more and more communities uh, that are starting to, to grow. Some of these have been around for, for years. Some of them are newer in open source to solve these types of problems. And so this is exciting. This shows, again, there's a huge demand for this type of activity. There's a huge demand for solutions in the space. And I think one of the things that we try to do is always bring together different open source communities that are doing similar work so we've invited people from, from each of these communities to participate in, in this week's event and hope many of them are, are on right now and, and, and can join throughout the week. And a lot of that is, uh, you know, again, making sure we're not duplicating effort, figuring out where we can leverage what we've learned, if there's code that we can leverage that's common. This is a good thing. So the, these are responses to the demands in the market for this type of automation work. So these are all reasons why we felt like this should, should be in the top three of topics for, for open devs this year. Um, the last stat that I'll, I'll leave you with that is an indication of just how much interest and demand there is for this type of software is if you look at, at Ironic as an example, this was a, a project that was originally um, uh, part of Nova and that's it split off within the OpenStack world into, into a standalone project so more developers could get involved and, and really focus on this. That was many years ago that it became, became ironic. And what's really awesome to see is that we're now getting more code merged per day in ironic than ever in the history of OpenStack. So this graph really indicates that a lot of people have this set of problems and they wanna solve it together. They wanna solve it in open source and they're doing it um, in a lot of communities. And when you look at OpenStack's uh, ironic project, this is, this is a, a, again, another sign that a lot of people want to work together on these problems, which is what we like to see. And so if you look at uh, these two kind of data points, we see a lot of interesting innovation happening in hardware. And we see a lot of uh, rapid progress going into the software solutions and the different open source communities to help people uh, tackle that. However, uh, when I talk to operators and we see this in the data and the market data and the user survey data that we've that we operate every year, that, that survey, um, we see that a lot of people aren't using those tools. A lot of people have created their own in-house tools, or they have their own scripts, they have it written on the back of a napkin. I mean, the, the, the actual uh, issue on the ground for a lot of people from a practical standpoint is they're not necessarily taking advantage of all those tools. There's a lot of stuff that was written before they came along and you kind of, you feel kind of stuck with it. So one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is, you know, what exactly is holding back the adoption? Because we've got the hardware, we've got the software. Um, and sometimes I think as technologists, we think that's it, our job's done. Um, we built some technology, problem solved. Um, but we know that that's not really the practical reality in the real world. Um, so a lot of what we need to share beyond just lines of code and, and, um, and, Hardware is practical knowledge, and that's what this event is all about. We have a number of people that are up here that talk about how they've adopted these tools. And if you haven't yet adopted one of these standardized tools for managing your hardware and your data center, that's okay. That's okay. You're not alone. Uh, that's actually the most common scenario is for someone to not yet uh, have picked a standard tool and to have something they wrote in-house or, or just kind of a series of scripts. So that's very, very common. And what we're trying to do is bring together people to share a lot of this knowledge so that it's not just about expecting another feature in one of these tools to, to move the needle on adoption. We actually need to, to help people 
And we also uh, can document some of the gaps. So when we look at the tools, there, there may be cases where we need to add more support for certain hardware, certain features. So we'll get those conversations going this week. And, um, you know, really, I think this quote is one of my favorites. It kind of sums up the, uh, the scenario that I see playing out often in the technology world where we sort of think that we've, we've built something and therefore it solves a problem. And, you know, in the real world, of course, uh, there is a giant gap between theory and practice. And so that's what we try to do is bring together communities of practice around a specific problem domain at OpenDev. So that's what we're here to do this week. And when you think about these communities of practice, it's all about the people. And um, so we have a lot of people from a lot of different organizations that are uh, going through this experience of building the software, operating the software to automate their data center, automate the hardware uh, in the cloud environments and edge environments. And uh, you know, this is a, an impressive list of companies, but of course, it's not really about companies, it's about people. So. Uh, I would encourage you to get to know the people behind the uh, behind the names. Um, you know, some people think that corporations are people. I don't really subscribe to that. I think people are people. So, let's meet some of those people this week and talk about uh, you know what we can learn together and share that knowledge, not just the code, but the knowledge. You know, we have people from over 200 companies and 55 countries. So that's a lot of diverse experience and knowledge. And so let's get to know each other. I know we're in a virtual environment, it's a little different, but I think we can do it. We had a lot of success in the first open dev virtually, so we can do it here again. And so in terms of where a lot of this work goes on, um, this work beyond the code, uh, I think obviously open dev, we, you're here, so you're in the right place. But there are also a lot of SIGs. Um, this is just a, a partial list, a uh, couple of, of SIGs to, to mention, we can drop links in the chat so you can you can learn about it later or join up. Uh, the the multi-architecture SIG, this is obviously um, a hot topic these days and trying to figure out what type of work needs to go on to support new architectures in uh, the data center. As I said, or moving from desktop or mobile into the data center at a rapid pace. So that's what that SIG is all about. And then of course the bare metal SIG. So these are both within the OpenStack community, but they're, they're also uh, welcoming of, of anybody working with any tools out there. It doesn't have to be OpenStack. So it's really focused on these, these specific sets of problems and open source software for, for infrastructure. Everybody's welcome. And uh, so one of the things that these groups do is produce documentation beyond the code and some of that, that practical knowledge sharing. So as an example, um, the uh, bare metal SIG just published some new documents, uh, I believe today, in fact, and to tell us about it, I wanna welcome Julia Krieger. Thank you, Mark. Well, about a year and a half ago, the bare metal SIG and ultimately the larger community decided to tell a story. Why bare metal is important, why ironic is important, While making it easy to build the foundations we build our infrastructure upon is so important. But most importantly, they embarked on this journey in order to spread the word of how they use the tooling to make not only their lives better, but improve their infrastructure and ultimately the world. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, so this uh, information that you've all published, uh, where can people find this, uh, the white paper and, and more information about it? The white paper can be found on openstack.org slash bare metal or on the new website, ironicbaremetal.org. Great, thank you so much. Well, this is a, a perfect example of uh, people coming together and sharing that knowledge. This white paper is very extensive. I definitely recommend everybody check it out and also get involved in the SIG, check out the new Ironic website. We've got the URLs here, we'll drop them in the chat and you can see a little, little screenshot. So trying to get that knowledge out there and we'll be doing that throughout this whole week with all of your help. So with that, I just wanna say again, welcome to the second Open Dev of 2020 on hardware automation. And I'm gonna turn it back over to our co-hosts, Ashley Ferguson and Jonathan Bryce to take us away. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, that was a, a great, uh, great opening for the day. 
And what we will be doing for the rest of the day is uh, having those interactive discussions that Ashley was talking about. Um, the morning is going to be broken up into two, two segments uh, covering the provisioning life cycle for bare metal. And uh, we'll start out with uh, Mohammed um, moderating the first section and James taking the second section after a short break. Um, but before we get to that, um, Ashley, could you tell us about what the topics are um, for the next, uh, the next two days? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Jonathan covered today's topics, um, but definitely make sure to come back Tuesday and Wednesday because um, we'll be discussing consuming bare metal infrastructure um, for provisioning cloud-based workloads uh, tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we'll be talking all things networking. Um, and then also on Wednesday, uh, something that's very important to this event uh, and kind of makes it what it is, is the wrap up. So that's basically um, a shorter segment where we kind of talk about next steps and how to keep um, keep and stay involved in the future. And, and a lot of those ways are through the SIGs that Mark mentioned earlier. Um, so we'll be covering um, sort of summaries from the week and, and key takeaways, but also um, some key challenges that maybe we still have some work to do on. Uh, so make sure to stick around for that wrap up as well.